And now, um, the, so the series that we've, uh, I've been invited to step into is called The Tough Stuff of Relationships and this title today is Encouragement That Leads to Empowerment. And uh, I, as Cass was alluding to earlier, I feel uh, a divine appointment in speaking and preaching about this because when I did, I've, I've done various surveys on spiritual gifts throughout my life and always encouragement, a gift of encouragement seems to be on my list. Uh, that, that ability to offer a spiritual gift of encouragement to others. So I really get a, a kicker out of it and uh, I really you know, believe that it's something that I love to give to people. And many, many others of you are in that category. Whether it's just a, a, an occasional thing or, a, or a, a thing that you feel called to do regularly, it's a real blessing. But I want to also speak today about discouragement. It would make sense if you're going to speak about encouragement to offer some sort of time about discouragement. And in some senses, I feel, uh, if you like, uh, experienced or equipped in that to speak to you about that today. Seven years ago, nearly to the day, uh, Judy and I, uh, I guess, started to go through a period of significant turmoil in our lives. A, a member of our family died at a young age. We sold our home. Uh, we, we went, I went to study. Our wage went down. We experienced a, an extended time of financial hardship. And some of the things that were involved in that uh, obviously were completely unexpected, out of the blue, and, and, and in some senses shocked us. Um, and uh, at times I felt very discouraged about that. And those of you who, who served with me are aware of that. And, and at times when we get discouraged, we actually become vulnerable. Uh, we, be, we, we start to become vulnerable to, if you like, a sweet of other uh, temptations and distractions uh, that really can start to distract us and wear us down. Um, there's an old fable that says the devil once held a sail and offered all the tools of his trade to anyone who would pay their price. They were spread out on a table and each one was labelled hatred, malice, envy, despair, sickness, sensuality, all, excuse me, all the weapons that everyone knows so well. But off to one side lay a harmless looking wood shaped instrument marked discouragement. It was old and worn looking but it was priced far above the rest. And when asked the reason why the devil replied because I can use this one so much more easily than the others. No one knows that it belongs to me so with it I can open doors that are tightly bolted against the others. Once I get inside I can use any tool that suits me best. Now, I don't know about you, but that actually gives me the creeps thinking about the activity of the devil. But I told it to give you, to arm you. The Bible says that we are not ignorant of the strategies and the schemes of the evil one. So there's some inside information on the role that discouragement would be used in your life if you would allow it to be so. So friends, tonight, today, we're doing a bit of spiritual warfare, all right? We're going to kick a few heads, not yours. We're going to crush a few skulls, but they're not going to be on our side because we're casting out discouragement today from this church and from your lives. We're going over to the other side of encouragement because encouragement speaks the truth about God and about your life and your circumstances. So we don't want any wrong believing here today about where we are in the picture of God, but we want to believe the word that's been spoken over us time and time again in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, does anyone really want to leave here today discouraged? Is that really on anyone's list for church today? I don't think so. But instead, let's go with our heads lifted up. Uh, to, at the start of 2013, uh, God really challenged me about this period, if you like, of extended discouragement. And he said to me, uh, I wrote it down, David, this is to be the year of faith-filled thought, speech and prayer. And folks, I want to suggest there might be some of you who want to receive that as a word from God right now for 2016 that this is going to be a time where you are going to stop playing the cassette called discouragement. The CD with despair is going to be ejected and instead you are going to pick up faith-filled speech, thought and prayer this year. 
And you're saying, well, what is that, wishful thinking? No, brothers and sisters, it's based on the Word of God. It's based on the truth of God's activity in your life and in our church in this world. And you're going to pick it up and you're going to run with that this year. Because you've been spending far too long, far too much time in the camp of discouragement. And it's filled with lies. It's not true and it doesn't reflect the way God has spoken over you already and the way that he speaks over you today. It's time to make a change and a time to move forward. You might say that God encouraged me with those words three years ago and I'm happy to revisit them again today and to claim them again for the year that lies ahead of me and my family and the church at the Hills Christian Family Centre and for that matter the church that meets here. Now what you might say has this got to do with relationships? Well let's think about it. Who wants to be around someone who is discouraged? Uh, Now folks sometimes we do that as an act of love. I'm not saying let's disown everyone who's discouraged uh, but who wants to be around someone who is discouraging? I mean that's even worse when it's coming back in your direction. So friends I want to suggest that it's a totally different experience when we are encouraged by others and they are encouraged by us. William Arthur Ward once said, flatter me and I may not believe you, criticize me and I may not like you, ignore me and I may not forgive you, but encourage me and I will not forget you. Because the encouragement resonates in a way that really is beyond our understanding sometimes. It's because it's a spiritual gift and it's a ministry of the Holy Spirit. So let's release that power within us today. I've got encouragements uh, really coming out of my ears. I just thought about one earlier um, when uh, it was back around the time that we'd moved into our second rental and uh, things were very tight for us and we came home from church one night here on a Sunday night. I'm just trying to remember the year but I'm struggling a bit for it at the moment. And um, on our doorstep was a beautiful basket wrapped in cellophane of goodies, food, and, and I think there was even a bottle of wine in there. Don't say that, don't tell anyone that. But I, well, anyway, I think so. But uh, so there was this basket. So we picked it up. The four of us had come home from church, took it inside, unwrapped it. And as I looked through all the stuff in there, it was filled with things that each of us uh, liked, like the the four of us. I don't know how, whether that was a gift of the Holy Spirit or someone knew us well did it, I don't know. But it looked a bit spiritual and it looked a bit prophetic and I'm thinking, this is really interesting. No name whatsoever on the basket. For all I know, the person that gave it to us is sitting here today. But no name whatsoever on the basket except one card that said Luke 6, 38. That's all it had on it. They didn't even write out the scripture for me. I had to go and look it up. Um, (laughs) Now, those of you who know your Bible, it's when uh, Jesus says to his followers, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, uh, will be running over. Uh, uh, Something of that nature. I don't remember all the words of it right now. And I started crying. Because we were so hard pressed at that time because of where we'd found ourselves. But I realised that someone had attempted to encourage us in a way, because they had added something tangible to it, in a way that I will never forget for the rest of my life. I'll never forget it. I can recall that scripture because it was attached to that basket of food. Uh, And... I just want to give you an example. I mean, I could keep listing it. And thank you to those people who took the time to do that because it really impacted us uh, at that time. So friends, we have a, a ministry of encouragement to each other. We're not talking about pep talks, but we're talking about the tools of spiritual warfare. We're going to go to war today against discouragement. We're going to build a bridge over that and get onto the side of encouragement because that's what God wants to speak over us today. He already has spoken to it and he wants to release it into your life today. My research indicates that there are 23 different one another's in the scripture. Most of them are in the New Testament and they are there as the writers under inspiration of the Holy Spirit attempted to write to God's people about how they should interact with each other. Of those 23, eight of them relate to how we communicate with each other. And we're going to put that list up on the screen. Thank you very much, team. So we're told to greet one another, speak to one another, 
Agree with one another, instruct, teach and admonish, don't slander and don't deceive, and to encourage one another. We're to encourage one another. And the first thing that we can say about encouragement is found in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 3. Encouragement protects us against hard-heartedness. It says in verse 3, encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that, none, so that none of you may be hardened against sin's deceitfulness. So encouragement is not just about, oh, that person's looking a bit flat, I'll go and give him a bit of a pep up. But it's something that is to be done way before there's any sign of despair or depression so that none of us might become hardened to sin's deceitfulness. So that none of us might slip into a place where we stop believing the promises of God, where we falter in our following of Jesus Christ, and where we start to get into a place where we just think, God's finished with me, uh, I'm no good, uh, you know, this thing's never going to change, there's no good that can come out of this, uh, you know, it's, it's all over for me and for the church and for those around us. So friends, even your encouragement serves a purpose way before the, if you like, uh, spectre of discouragement even dawns on your door. So friends, never hold back from that encouragement to each other. Never, never think, oh, well, they, they look happy, they're doing fine, you know, I'm not going to bother. Because your encouragement can become a barrier and a protection for that person against believing a lie of the devil. That one encouragement. That basket that was given to us almost is set up in our lives as a block whenever we are tempted to believe that God does not care or know about the things that we need in our life. It's there like a foundation. It's there like a boundary. The, the funny little basket, you know, the cellophane, it stands there with Luke 6, 38, and it is a rock that we stand on. And friends, have you got that gift to give to someone else today? Have you got that to offer to someone else today, that little act that may set them apart and protect them from sin for the rest of their life? Give that encouragement to your brother and sister. The second thing we can say about encouragement is that true encouragement is not wishful thinking. It is based upon biblical fact and spiritual reality. In other words, the will and the word of God. Now, an example of this is Deuteronomy 1.38, when it says, but your assistant, this is uh, God talking to Moses, but your assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, will enter it, that's the promised land. Encourage him, why? Because he will lead Israel to inherit it. So this is not, oh, give him a bit of a cheer up so that hopefully he can get his act together and hopefully he won't stuff it up and, you know, hopefully that the, my will will get done, otherwise it's going to be a disaster and I'm going to have to work something out. This is, this is not what the encouragement is based on. The encouragement is based on the fact that God is saying, this is where Joshua is going. This is what he will achieve. You are to encourage him and bring him into the reality of what I am going to do in and through him. So folks, when I'm encouraging you, I'm not just trying to give you a bit of a pep up and, you know, I really hope that you feel a little bit better and, you know, we just get a bit of a smile out, yeah, maybe you laugh. But I'm speaking the reality of God and his purposes outwork through you. We are speaking spiritual truth over your life. So when someone encourages you, don't bat it away. Don't then play the tape of discouragement and say, yeah, that'll never work. But instead, understand how your brother and sister in Christ is trying to speak the will of God over your life and agree with them and say, it is yes and amen in Jesus Christ because of his, it's been spoken over me. Can you get that, folks? It's speaking about what is going to happen. Friends, it says in the scriptures, I've lost the reference just at the moment, that the purposes of God will be achieved. And you're tempted so often to believe otherwise. There's so many things in our world that want to say it's going to be different. But folks, I'm telling you, I'm claiming the promises of God, the purposes of God will be achieved. And you will either flow with that and celebrate that victory in your life or you'll spend your life stuck in discouragement because you refuse to believe it about you. And folks, I don't want that to be true for you. 
I want you to be a liver outerer of the promises of God. Yes, friends, we experience difficulties and frustrations, at times shocks and turmoil and trauma, but friends, that does not change the spiritual truth and reality that God has spoken over his people in Jesus Christ. And we are to say yes and amen to that, just like Jesus does, and to see it come to pass in our life. So it's not just, oh, I hope you feel better. It's a pronouncement of the will and favour of God over your life based on the scriptures and the testimony of the Holy Spirit. How are we going so far? Number three, encouragement is a spiritual gift. And some of you are given it occasionally. Some of you almost have it to express and perform repeatedly. It says in Romans chapter 12, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. Verse 8, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give cheerfully. If it is leading, then lead diligently. If it's to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. So encouragement is in the suite of spiritual gifts that are listed in Romans 12. In 1 Corinthians 14, it says, The one who prophesies speaks to people, for what reasons? For their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. So we're talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit through the body of Christ in order to lift us up and encourage us in our walk with Jesus Christ. It's nothing less than that. Nothing less than that. And we listed those ones earlier, the, the list of verbal ones. The top of the list is greet, greet one another. I, I don't know why you would need a scripture to command us and instruct us to do that. Seems a bit odd to me. The next one is speak to one another. That's a bit strange. But when you think about it, even saying hello to someone is acknowledging that they exist. It's acknowledging that they're there. When you use their name, it's even more powerful because you're saying, you are known to me. And when you speak to someone, it shows that you are a person who is open to relationship with another. This is why they're there, folks. They're not to be neglected or despised, but to understand that even when you shake someone's hand, you make physical contact and you say just by the clasping of hands, I am with you. I am for you. I'm hanging on to you, brother or sister. And so is the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't ever despair the ministry of the Holy Spirit through encouragement. Number four, biblical encouragement has faithfulness to Jesus as its focus. Barnabas, whose name, as it turns out, meant son of encouragement, was sent by the Jerusalem church to investigate the outbreak of faith in the city of Antioch. When he arrived, he saw what the grace of God had done. He was glad and encouraged them all. Why? To do what? To remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. And this is an encouragement for us today, folks, that God is speaking over all of you today to remain true to the Lord with all your heart. That's a biblical encouragement. So much flows out of that when we get that right. Uh, the message was the same when Barnabas returned to Antioch later with Paul, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. The life of discipleship involves trouble, Jesus said, but we are to be encouraged to remain faithful to what the Lord is doing in his life and his purposes. And finally, now oh, I've got a bit of time. Uh, number five, uh, encouragement is a ministry of God to his people. And this is one of the most exciting ones, I think, of all. Uh, it says in Psalm chapter 10, You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. That's a promise I never want to forget. In Acts chapter 9, it says, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord, respecting God, and 
encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. What a wonderful set of conditions for fruitfulness, respecting God and receiving encouragement from the Holy Spirit. And then in Romans 15, it says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Jesus Christ had. God is a giver of the gift of endurance. We don't often think about that as being a gift. (laughs) And encouragement. But endurance and encouragement go together. They're locked together. It's hard to endure without encouragement. But God is the giver of those gifts to you. It says in the Bible, when King David was in a time of trouble, that he strengthened himself. God is involved in encouragement. You need to cooperate with his encouragement and you need to offer it freely to other people so that we might all be built up and lifted with encouragement. Friends, I want to say a few words uh, about discouragement before we move towards our conclusion. Um, I don't know how you would define discouragement. One uh, thought that I came up with, what is, it's to lack courage, it's to not have courage or hope about ourselves or our circumstances or a situation uh, and, and it's just to be in a non-encouraged state. Sometimes we face discouragement that's momentary. Sometimes discouragement can persist about particular things or even become a way of thinking for every part of our lives for us for sometimes many years. In some senses, there's no reason for a follower of Christ to be discouraged. It's it's almost inexcusable, and I don't mean that as a condemnation, I'm just trying to bring your attention to the fact that the speaking of Jesus over his people is so comprehensive that there's just no room for discouragement. But sometimes we become uh, particularly victim of, uh, we become particularly vulnerable to it. And lying behind that, I want to suggest, is that we have either forgotten or don't have knowledge of the promises and the purposes of God. We're, our faith and belief in those, or even our knowledge of them, has, has gone or waned or disappeared or, or lacks in some way. And that's when we need a gift of encouragement for, each, for others. And I want to invite you all today to reflect right at this moment on how you are travelling in relation to encouragement and to discouragement. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to put a finger right now on the thing or the things that you are discouraged about. Some of you are fully aware of what it is. You can, you can name it, point to it. You might even have two or three things that you're discouraged about. Others of you, it's lying there in the distance. It's in the background or under the surface. It's hard to identify, but there's something that feeds at times a sense of, of discouragement and I just want you to think about it now because friends God wants to speak to it and to deal with it God wants to minister to it right now we are going to have in a few moments time a moment of prayer for you a moment if you're willing where we're going to lay hands on you and pray about your discouragement and by the grace of God By the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to suggest that we're going to break that discouragement over you today. We're going to put in your mind, so to speak, a new way of thinking about yourself and your circumstances and that situation. Because if you have come to believe untruths about those things, you have accepted something that your situation is not redeemable, that there's nothing good that can come out of it, both of which are contrary to the word of God. But you've bought it from somewhere and you're starting to play it back to yourself, you're speaking it to others and you, in effect, are praying the prayers of the devil over yourself and your circumstances. Friends, that's got to change because there's enough tripe and trash around the place today without 
us joining in with evil speech. Instead, 2016 is the year of faith-filled, correct speaking and thought and prayer over ourselves and our others, this church, the community and the world. We're not going to repeat what the devil gave us to say about ourselves and others. It's out with the evil and in with the good. It's in with the word of God spoken over ourselves. Why spend this year in further bondage when God is inviting you today to walk out of discouragement and dwell with him in encouragement? I know the place that I want to be, folks. I know the camp that I want to live in. I know the suburb where I want to reside. And it's where the word of God can freely encourage me every day. I get up every morning. I pick up the book of Proverbs because I'm still stuck on the Seton's Life Journal reading plan. I'm never going to get off that one. So it looks like the church up there is going to be reading it whether they like it or not. I pick up the book of Proverbs and the first thought is it's January the 1st. I've just come off, you know, five intense months of not knowing which way was up in my new role. Uh, What's this year going to be like? I don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, Oh, we're reading Proverbs. How on earth is that going to help me? You know, where's the God? What's going on with that? Oh, I'll give it a read. I get to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, verse 5, 6, 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not under his understanding. Commit your ways to him and he will make your path straight. I've read that before, but what is that? What's that saying to me now? How's that trying to encourage me? I read a few of my study notes and I realize that God is saying, this is live, this is active, you are on air with this scripture now, son. This is not just for when you need to make a decision. You are to trust me and not try to work this out yourself and lean into me and commit to doing things the way that I show you how to do and I will make you and your paths straight. You will be the lead pastor that this church needs. It will flourish and grow as you lean into me. And I'm three days in and the Holy Spirit's encouraging me through the, leading, through the reading plan that I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work for me in January. So folks, if you're open to encouragement, if you're willing to do the things that place you in the seat to receive encouragement, God will speak. He's promised to do it. He keeps his promises. The Bible says no one comes to God and seeks him and fails to find him. No one. It, 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 God doesn't do that to people. Sometimes it requires persistence. Sometimes it's sudden. But friends, now that you're here, now that you've come to church, now that we're gathered together and the Bible says when two or three are here, I am with you in a unique, different way, let's believe for a difference and a change when it comes to faith. I'm going to squeeze one more thing in. Some of you need to think about failure in a different way. I haven't got time to do that today. This is called Failure Freedom. It's by Paul de Jong. Some of us found it at the CRC conference last week. My daughter bought it and got a note from Paul. I'm very jealous. I saw, she left it on the bench. I said, I'm taking that. I read it in a day. She's angry with me. She wanted to read it first, that's all. But uh, I'm reading it and I'm thinking, mate, I'm running with this. You see, we think about failure as final. We get discouraged over it. I've got a failure list. You want to read it? You want to swap it? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, mate, I've got a failure list. But Dale Carnegie said, develop success from failures. What? Discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stepping stones to success. I'll read that again so that the person reading it can get it right. Develop success from failures. Discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stones to success. Let's not park in failure and discouragement. But let's this year step on top of it and rise up to the next stage in our fruitfulness and in our life. Can you say amen to that? Final scripture and then we're going to pray. 
In 2 Thessalonians verse 2 it says, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. If you can't remember any words out of that scripture, we'll just arrow back to verse 16 if that's okay. I just want you to look at the words in eternal encouragement. <laughs> encouragement that lasts forever and ever in Jesus Christ. Never ending, overflowing, short on encouragement. Guys, I know where to look. The Lord Jesus Christ is your source of that today. Let's pray.